everybody, John Wagnon here with Def Central, and we are going through the 2021 OWASP Top 10. And this is security risk number five, and this one is security misconfiguration. All right, so if you watched the, uh, the number four video, that was insecure design. So again, insecure design is just, hey, this whole thing has been designed insecurely. So no amount of security you know, technology or functionality is going to help the, the fundamental flaws here. But this one is different. Security misconfiguration is, uh, is you have security components within your application, but they're, they're not configured correctly, right? Like maybe you've not changed the default password or things like that, right? All right, so a little bit about security misconfiguration. This moves up from the number six spot in the previous edition, in the 2017 edition of the OWASP Top 10. And uh, if you remember in the overview video, I talked about all of these different applications that were tested and different companies that provided data and all that. And so 90% of the applications uh, that were tested and, and data collected on uh, were tested for, for some form of security misconfiguration. And they had over 200,000 occurrences of security misconfiguration uh, in their data set. So, I mean, this is a massive problem, right? So a couple of things to look for to know if your application might be vulnerable is uh, if, if unnecessary features are enabled or installed or if default accounts and their passwords are still enabled and, and maybe unchanged, like I said a second ago. Um, or maybe the latest security features are disabled if you do an upgrade on your, on your software. You know, so hey, you go from version one to version two, and oh, by the way, in version two, that security feature that you had in version one, that's disabled by default. So you need to make sure that that's enabled, right? Um, so the, uh, you know, maybe the, the server, the application server does, does not send security headers or directives, right? Or they're not set to secure values. Or maybe the software that you're running is out of date or it's vulnerable, those kinds of things, right? So those are some things to look for. Uh, so maybe just a quick scenario or a couple of quick scenarios here. Let's say you have, uh, you know, your application here, you know, you've written this awesome application and let's say you've designed this thing securely, right? Um, but the software that is used to run this application is, uh, is misconfigured, right? So you need, to, you need to turn the dials and flip the switches correctly. All right, so let's say that the application server um, that, that your application is running on, so I'll just, you know, I'll put maybe, you know, app, app uh, server right here, right, that it, that it actually runs on. Let's say that this comes with some, you know, sample application. So this server maybe contains your application, but maybe, you know, some, some sample app out here, right, that just, uh, that just, you know, comes with the server itself. And maybe that uh, sample application was not removed when you installed your application or loaded your application on this application server. Um, and then let's say that that sample application has some kind of known, you know, known vulnerability or maybe uh, several vulnerabilities, right? So that's a vulns, right? So known vulnerabilities uh, on this sample application or the sample app that comes on the application server that you're using to host your application, right? Um, okay, so this sample app has known vulnerabilities. Well, then what's an attacker going to do? An attacker is going to come after um, is going to come after this, right? The sample app and is going to exploit these known vulnerabilities. And let's just say, for example, that um, one of these applications is in the admin console on the application server. And let's say that the that the default accounts, and maybe that's one of the known vulnerabilities of this sample application. Let's say the default accounts uh, are not changed and the default passwords are well known on those default accounts, then of course an attacker could log in with those default passwords and then start to take over, you know, take over your application, take over this app server, right? Um, so that's a problem. So that would be a misconfiguration of security because frankly what you need to do is take this whole sample app right here that's on the app server and just remove it all together, right? And then that takes away the, uh, you know, the, that, that attack vector for the attacker, right? Um, okay, so let's say uh, beyond that, maybe another scenario would be that you're running your application and it's designed correctly and all that stuff is good. But let's say that there's a, like an error message. So I'll say, you know, error message that gets sent to the user, um, you know, whenever there's some sort of a, an error, right? And let's say that, you know, it includes all of these details about, you know, one, two, three, four, whatever. Um, so 
you know, maybe maybe as the application developer, you're trying to say, hey, user, I want to give you all the information I can about, you know, the error that you've experienced on my application. But what, what you could be doing is opening up the door for an attacker to knowingly create the error message. And then they start looking at all of these details, like, hey, what version are you running? You know, what, uh, what are some of the underlying flaws with, um, you know, with this specific version of software that you're running this application on? That kind of a thing. And then they can use that information to then try to attack, uh, you know, some sort of a, a vulnerability that you have in your application. All right, so if there's too much detail in your error messaging, that could be a security misconfiguration example as well. So there's a lot of these, but those are a couple of them, you know, to kind of consider. So one thing that you could think about in terms of helping with this is that, number one, this is a very difficult task. It, it takes a lot of work. Um, one, so one of the things to consider is look at hardening guides for each framework that you use for your application and follow that hardening guide. I know it's a lot of it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of work, but it's a it's an important step to take. Um, one example, and I'll just uh, I'll just uh, list you know maybe list it down here. So let's say you want to set your TLS, your transport layer security settings up to like a really secure thing, uh, you know, really secure settings. Mozilla has a uh, SSL config generator, and that helps with secure TLS, right? Secure settings on TLS, and you can even do the the uh, you know the SSL score. Um, you know, and get an A plus and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so that Mozilla SSL config generator helps you with, you know, setting all of your TLS uh, settings correctly. Um, another thing to consider is a repeatable hardening process that makes it fast and easy to deploy uh, another environment that's appropriately locked down, you know? So when we talk about the age of modern applications and automation and, you know, spinning up containerized microservices and all that stuff, then you need to make it fast and easy to deploy another environment. So you need to have some kind of repeatable hardening process that locks down what would be that new environment, right? Um, another thing to consider is, is in your application, have a minimal platform, uh, as minimal as you can. This is kind of that least privileged type of an idea uh, that removes any kind of unnecessary features or components or documentation or samples, those kinds of things. Um, so remove any kind of unused features, any kind of unused framework, kind of going back to this little sample app uh, example that we said a second ago. Um, another thing that you can consider is uh, sending security directives to clients, like security headers, um, like HSTS would be one example, the HTTP strict transport security, for example, you can implement those. Um, and, then you, and then another thing to think about is an automated process to verify the effectiveness of the configurations and settings in all of your environment. So try to automate this as much as you can. So this, uh, this you know, uh, security misconfiguration is a big problem. And I, again, I understand it's, it's uh, you know, when you talk about applications spread across multiple, you know, cloud environments or, you know, this very distributed nature of, of maybe a modern application, then there's a lot to that. And so I know it's hard to really get your arms wrapped around it, uh, but it's very important uh, because, you know, you miss, you miss these little details along the way, then the attackers are going to find those places that you missed, and they're going to exploit those vulnerabilities, and uh, it's not going to be good. So you want to configure your application securely um, and make sure everything stays safe. So thanks for watching this Lightboard Lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.